I don't want to vlog about this, but I think it's, I think it's good. <laughs> We haven't worked out in like two weeks, uh, so I'm a little bit nervous, but this is the first day that's like above freezing. Like, I'm talking like seven degrees, because the garage isn't heated at all, so. Jeez, it's like icy out here though. Wow. Some sort of freezing rain situation right now. All public school is canceled today. Lucky them. That was like kind of depressing. I feel like I'm starting over with pull-ups. But then also like after taking two weeks off and the holidays, and there's a small part of me that's like, well, we could take today off too. Like why not? And then take the rest of our lives off. But. I'm glad I just got out there. Oh, it's like hailing right now. Good morning. My kids are still learning the lesson that just because something is on sale does not mean you need to buy it. For breakfast today, I made Dutch babies. They're, this whole pan was full, but you eat them so quickly. But I have another one for my mom and dad. I guess. Seven made our own Dutch baby it for was Ben and I. But I'm actually not very hungry because I just drank a really large protein gross smoothie. All right, and hey, we gotta show off your outfit, but we, we gotta be careful because okay. we don't wanna turn this into a channel that's one of those types of channels, you know. <laughs> Look at that. This is one of Cammie's new outfits. Mm -hmm. From shopping that. last week that she... Really just the sweater. But. Oh. You trying to get yourself pregnant for the Appalachian Trail? Maybe. What are you working on? Uh, Turkish Delight. We made it last night and now it's the next day and we have to do this. Hey, no eating day. sugar. Okay. For you. For you. And then it says using oil. Since there's no school today, okay. there's no Hebrew lessons. Which means extra long coffee, writing, reading, relaxation time in the morning, which is really nice. Guess what dad I have for you? Uh -huh. Oh ho ho! Do you want lunch? Uh huh. Come here, look what dad will make you. Come here. Cabbage soup? Ew! Uh huh. You want some? Uh huh. It's very yummy. No. Yeah, it is. <laughs> Do you want some? No. Well, that's no, what we're eating for lunch. Ch chicken? Don't we have chicken? No, I don't think we have any more chicken left. It's very yummy though. I said that. Chicken, chicken? No, we don't have any chicken, sorry. Ben would be a really good Great Depression cook. <laughs> um, because he knows how to make something yummy that's kind of still not really that yummy, but <laughs> if he only had cabbage, he'd do pretty, pretty stinking good with it. 
This is our leftovers from last night's dinner. I hate the broth it is actually pretty good. Mom, I hate it because it's sweet. It was really innovative too because we had Reuben. Mm. Oh, it's really good. What was it, pastrami we made? And this is this, the broth from the pastrami. It's good for cabbage soup. Mm. All right. Here we go. Huh? Not bad, huh? Not bad for cabbage. Really. <laughs> no, it's, it's not bad. about this but I think it's I think it's good I think it's good too Ben and I had sex this afternoon and I may be ovulating and he went off to racquetball and left me this voicemail that was really cool he's his personality is, he's more, I don't really know how to describe it, but to the sexual side of things, he more can easily talk about it and he, he has more of a desire to talk about it. And I really appreciate that. And I was just listening to this message. Hello, Cammie. This is your husband, Ben, the one that you just made love with. And I was trying to let you know that I really enjoyed our time together. And I'm glad we kissed because there's something that's like really romantic to me about being with someone in a way that possibly could result in the creation of human life. And I can't think of anyone else that I'd want to do that with. And I've really enjoyed raising our six children with you. And I would love to raise the seven. Not like itching, but if there was anyone that I wanted to raise a seven with, it would be you. I just really appreciate him. And I, when I listen to this, I wanted to just say, hey, I listened to this and I love you. And now I'm realizing I want to say that I appreciate him for this because I think this is like a strength of his and it's a weakness of mine. And I, th I think that's great. You know, I think we both have differing strengths and weaknesses and I'm, I'm really glad that he can um, express this and help bring me into those moments that I would otherwise not be brought into as much by myself. Where he said on there, you know, we're not itching to have another baby right now. We're not even really trying, although we're not preventing it either. I think it's it's really cool just to, that he's expressing that his desire to have intimacy with me that's like, could result in an, another human life. Like that's just really stinking cool. And that's about all I have to say about that. Watch out. Whoa! <laughs> Jumped out. All right, look. See, we're talking about you right now, so I want to show them you. Do you see a little TV with your face on it? Mm -hmm. We want to take a minute and talk about a parenting thing that we've been experiencing with Rainier. And I really would like to show this stuff just live, but it's just not real, uh, realistic for us. It just, I feel like it would be fake, or we'd be putting on a show, or it would change our dynamic as parents. But 
This is the thing that we've been experiencing with Rainier is he's getting to an age where he is learning to obey. And one of the things we're teaching him is how to come when we say come. And I guess one of our like philosophies, and you, you can correct me, I think we're on the same page with all this, but if we're not. One of our philosophies is as early as possible to teach them to come instead of chasing him. So this manifests like really early. Like I feel like we've been doing this now for maybe a month or two. In a way, like could be started as soon as they learn to walk, but I feel like we didn't really get serious about it until recently. I guess maybe you could tell the story of this morning. <laughs> yeah. So I need Rainier for whatever reason. So I asked him to come and he will start going the other direction. And I'll say, Rainier, come and I'll give him a few chances and then if he doesn't then I'll either grab him and then spank him then like give him one slap on the hand and then I'll back up and then I'll and then he usually at that point he stops and he's crying and I'll back up and I'll give him another chance and then I'll say Rainier you need to come if you don't come you're gonna get another owie and this morning, I think we did that like three to five times. And finally, he conceded and said, okay, I'm coming to you. I don't want any more owies, so I'll come. And these are owies, just to give you an idea, it's like, it like probably stings very momentarily and yeah. might create a red mark for maybe like, I think less than a minute. When I spank him on the butt, he has a diaper and I don't like, yeah. we're not wailing on him. Right. like. I don't think it really hurts as much as it is like kind of startles him and mm -hmm. he he like he equates spanking with like oh crap I'm kind of busted like yeah so that's more what gets to him I think than the actual pain yeah I, I'm not that I'm opposed to the pain but there's not a lot of emotion or anger it's not yeah. like really hard but it is a training type of pain right. eventually he's learning this and I think he like does this but I know that he will do it more in the future there's a lot of effort uh, and pain up front, but I think in the long run, it actually leads to a lot more peace for him and for us. And um, hey, 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 hey. Hey, uh, where not, not, okay. we can say come and it can be for, I mean, it's definitely important in life or death situations, but it's it's more that it's also just for the day to day, where if we're out with him and he just starts like booking it through some store, we're not like constantly chasing him and being exhausted and getting to the point where I wouldn't even want to take him out then at that point. I've had moments like that. I mean, we have six kids and the first kid we had I was 21 and I didn't really want to do that whole thing. Trained kids are much easier to deal with and experience things and are part of the reasons why I think we can do the adventures we do and live the lifestyle we live yeah. without going crazy. But the other aspect, it's not just practical easier, but we're actually teaching our kids something we believe in. And that is that we have authority in their life and they need to learn to respect our voice and listen to that authority and their lives will go better. Yeah. We have this role in their life while they're, you know, at least under 13 or 18 and they live in our house. Mm -hmm. It's kind of weird because we're teaching them to respect us, but I think more than just respect us, we're teaching them what authority is and to respect a position of authority. Mm -hmm. And I think that's really important because the other way of what you're teaching them, when you chase your kid down, you're teaching them that they should respect whoever is the biggest, strongest, or more, most powerful. Because mm -hmm. they're going that way and you're, you know, let's say they're running towards a street or running towards, you know, just in that grocery store away from you. And you grab them against their will and you pull them back. You know, they're not really learning like, don't do that. They're just learning, oh, I didn't get away with it this time, mm -hmm. or this person's like bigger than me. Um, but maybe if I ran faster, I could have got away. And we want them to actually learn this important lesson, which I think will take them through the rest of life and through the rest of our family life and parenting. Right. Mm -hmm. So it's hard, but I think it's valuable. Yeah. And I think our kids, beyond just learning to come, they're kind of learning their place 
and they're learning about their role as a child and our role as a parent. Mm -hmm. Because coming in a grocery store is like not that big of a deal, you know? Yeah. Like we could strap the kids down with a seatbelt and probably avert that crisis. Mm -hmm. um, but in the bigger scheme like of things, but like what Cammy was talking about, or when the kids are four, five, and six, and we're saying, no, I don't want you to do that. And they throw a fit and mm -hmm. melt down, and there's a lot more on the line. Yeah. That's when learning to trust and respect our voice and obey it, I think really starts to pay off. You're looking fly in this thing. I can actually take my jacket off because I've got this. Okay, I'm gonna like, fire. I'm gonna try this right now. We'll see if he does this just for like oh, okay. a little training opportunity. This is a little bit risky. You know, it doesn't always work and that's okay. Hey, Rainier, can you come? Come? Good job! Good job, did you obey? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Dove made pizza tonight for dinner. Hi. And Hi. my parents are over here. here. But Whoa, hey, Rainier, you're not eating until you go pick up those pens. This one has mozzarella stuffed crust. Pickle? Oh, dang. Let's go. And then Eden is making some sort of appetizer type product here. What is this, Eden? I don't know. I'll oh. tell you. What are they? Garlic bombs. Garlic bombs. That seems good. We are starting our 12 step meeting right now with our family. We haven't met in three weeks or something like that. All right, we finished our 12 step meeting. It was actually pretty miserable, but we got through it. Maybe someday I'll be glad. But now we're doing um, kind of a new activity that we try and do every year. And this is where we take our leather bags. We have these bags that we got from, does it say the name? Yeah, it's like Saddleback Leather. Okay, so this is mine. And the thing with these bags is they're like pretty expensive and they're super well built. You can see I got mine in 2013. Um, but they have a lifetime warranty. <clears throat> So I got this, and then Dove was the first person to get one. I surprised her for her 13th birthday. She got that one there. And then we proceeded to get them for all the other kids for their 13th birthdays. So Seven has one there, and Eden has hers over there. And Cammie has a purse, and I even have this like leather portfolio thing that I keep my notepad in all the time. So anyways, once a year we like condition the leather and it's kind of a fun like annual tradition thing and we try and do it around New Year's or Christmas. So anyways, that's the rest of our night in this cozy room with the fire. We'll see you guys tomorrow.